At 75 years old, King Charles has just made a shocking admission that leaves no room for doubt, confirming what many have long suspected. For decades, theories and whispers swirled around the future king, his personal life, and his approach to the monarchy. Now, with this bombshell revelation, it seems that King Charles is finally ready to face the truth head on. What could this admission mean for the royal family, his legacy, and the future of the British throne? Let's dive into the stunning details of what King Charles just confessed. Struggles as the heir. From the moment King Charles was born on November 14, 1948, his life was set on a unique path. As the eldest son of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, Charles was always destined to one day become king. The weight of responsibility was placed on him from a young age, even though he was just a boy growing up in the shadow of a powerful monarch. His upbringing was unlike that of any other child in Britain shaped by royal traditions, constant public attention, and a strict sense of duty to the crown. Now at 75, King Charles finally admits what we have all suspected and what he said might just come as a shock. But before we get to that, you should know a couple of things about him. First of all, Charles was never the typical future king people expected. As a child, he was more reserved and introverted, showing a sensitive and thoughtful nature that stood in contrast to the strong, confident leaders the public was used to. While his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, took to her royal duties naturally, Charles seemed to struggle with the enormous expectations placed upon him. From his schooling at Gordonstown, where he was reportedly unhappy, to his awkward public appearances as a young man, it became clear early on that the pressures of royal life were weighing heavily on him. Throughout his youth and into his early adulthood, Charles found it difficult to live up to the image of a future monarch. His interests were far from the traditional duties expected of a prince. He showed a deep passion for intellectual pursuits, art, and environmental issues, areas that he would later champion during his years of waiting for the throne. However, at the time, these interests didn't align with the public's view of what a future king should be like. People wanted a strong, charismatic leader who could stand tall in the face of the pressures of modern monarchy. Instead, they saw a man who appeared uncertain, withdrawn, and sometimes even out of touch with the everyday struggles of his future subjects. Charles's reserved nature was often interpreted as aloofness, and he was frequently criticized for being overly serious or lacking the charm that his mother possessed. His public appearances were scrutinized by both the media and the public, leading to growing doubts about his ability to take on the role of king when the time came. Even within royal circles, there were whispers that he might not be the right person to lead the monarchy into the future. His awkwardness during public ceremonies and his tendency to avoid the limelight only added to these concerns. Adding to the pressure, was the looming figure of his mother, Queen Elizabeth, who was not only beloved by the public, but also known for her steady, hands-on approach to her royal duties. By comparison, Charles seemed less decisive and less prepared for the crown, fueling doubts about his readiness to assume the role of king. In many ways, the public couldn't help but compare him to his mother and wonder whether he had the qualities needed to lead the monarchy in a rapidly changing world. As Charles matured, some of his personal decisions only reinforced these doubts. The Diana Years In 1981, the world watched with excitement as Prince Charles married Lady Diana Spencer in a grand royal wedding. The ceremony, held at St Paul's Cathedral, was nothing short of a spectacle, and the young couple instantly became a global sensation. Princess Diana, just 20 years old at the time, was adored by the public. She was beautiful, elegant, and appeared to have the ideal image of a modern princess. On the surface, it seemed like a match made in heaven. However, beneath the royal facade, the cracks in their relationship would soon begin to show. 
From the very start, there were signs that Charles and Diana's marriage was troubled. Their age gap of 12 years, combined with vastly different personalities, created tension. Charles, in his early 30s and already accustomed to the pressures of royal life, was focused on his duties and personal interests. Diana, on the other hand, was thrust into the global spotlight and struggled to adapt to the intense spotlight that came with being a member of the royal family. Despite these underlying issues, the public was enchanted by the couple, and Diana quickly became the people's princess. As their marriage progressed, it became clear that Charles and Diana were on very different paths. Diana's charm and compassion made her beloved by the public in a way that overshadowed Charles. She had a natural ability to connect with people, particularly through her charity work and public appearances. In contrast, Charles often came across as distant and reserved. The media played a significant role in amplifying this perception, portraying Diana as the caring, relatable princess and Charles as the aloof, unemotional future king. Public scrutiny of their marriage intensified and Charles's every move was closely watched. The media constantly compared the two and Diana's growing popularity only served to stress Charles's shortcomings in the public's eyes. The more Diana shined, the more Charles appeared to fade into the background. And it wasn't long before rumors of trouble in their marriage began to circulate, the public's attention turned to the cracks in their royal union. One of the most significant factors contributing to the breakdown of their marriage was Charles's continued relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles. Even before his marriage to Diana, Charles had maintained a close bond with Camilla, and their relationship continued throughout his marriage. As details of his involvement with Camilla became public, the media frenzy surrounding Charles and Diana's relationship reached a fever pitch. The revelation of Charles's infidelity damaged his image and created a wave of sympathy for Diana, who was seen as the wronged wife. Diana's famous 1995 interview with BBC's Panorama only deepened the divide. In the interview, she openly spoke about her struggles within the royal family, her mental health, and the tension of her marriage to Charles. Most notably, she made the now famous comment, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded, referring to Charles' ongoing relationship with Camilla. The public's sympathy for Diana skyrocketed while Charles's reputation took a major hit. He was seen as the man who had not only failed in his marriage, but also betrayed the beloved princess. Diana's legacy continued to grow after their separation in 1992 and their eventual divorce in 1996. She became a global icon, using her platform to advocate for causes such as landmine awareness, HIV, and AIDS research. Her compassion and ability to connect with people on a personal level made her one of the most admired figures in the world. In contrast, Charles continued to struggle with his public image. Even after their divorce, Diana's shadow loomed large over Charles, making it difficult for him to escape the perception of being the cold, distant figure who had failed to appreciate the wife he once had. When Diana tragically died in a car accident in 1997, the world mourned, and the royal family faced intense criticism for their handling of the situation. Charles, in particular, was seen as emotionally detached, further solidifying the public's view of him as unfit for the emotional demands of leadership. While he did his best to navigate the fallout from Diana's death, the overwhelming public affection for Diana and the ongoing media attention to her legacy continued to define Charles. For years, he was seen as the man who had wronged the people's princess, a reputation that followed him well into his later life. However, in recent months, there are signs that Charles has begun to look more deeply into his past, including his relationship with Diana. At 75, Charles seems to be reassessing the role Diana played not only in his life, but also in shaping public perceptions of him and the monarchy as a whole. 
Diana's legacy is still strong today, and Charles, now king, appears to have a new understanding of the importance of connecting with the public in a more personal and compassionate way, much like Diana did. There are hints that Charles may have reconsidered some of his past actions and decisions, particularly in regard to his marriage and relationship with Camilla. While the damage caused by those years can never be undone, Charles's recent approach to his royal duties suggests that he has taken lessons from his past. In a way, Diana's enduring legacy may have prompted Charles to take a more empathetic and hands-on approach to his role as king, perhaps in an effort to finally win over a public that has long seen him as distant and out of touch. The marriage to Diana, its turmoil and the aftermath have undeniably shaped Charles's public image. Yet now, in his later years, Charles seems to be showing signs of acknowledging these past struggles, taking on his role with a seriousness and reflection that may very well be connected to the lessons learned from the memory of Lady D. But this isn't the only thing connected to what he finally admitted at 75 years of age, so hear me out, years in waiting. The thing is that King Charles holds the unique distinction of being the longest serving heir apparent in British history. For over 70 years, he stood in line for the throne, living under the shadow of Queen Elizabeth's reign. While the public's attention focused on the Queen's ongoing service and steadfast leadership, Charles's position as the future monarch often felt more like an indefinite weight than a defined role. His entire adult life was spent in preparation for a role that always seemed just out of reach, creating a sense of frustration that followed him for decades. Charles's waiting period was unprecedented. No other British monarch has ever been an heir as long as he was. This extended waiting period undoubtedly contributed to the perception that Charles was a man left in limbo, always on the verge of assuming his duties as king, but never quite getting there. It's not hard to imagine the frustration he must have felt as the years passed by unable to fully step into the role that had been promised to him since birth. This frustration was also public. As I have mentioned earlier, as Charles aged, there were ongoing questions about whether he would ever become king, and more importantly, whether he would be capable of handling the responsibility. With his mother reigning well into her 90s, some began to wonder whether Charles would inherit the throne at all, or if the crown would skip directly to his son, Prince William. These doubts, coupled with the public's preference for the younger, more charismatic members of the royal family, only deepened the uncertainty surrounding Charles's future role as king. However, Charles didn't spend these years of waiting idly. While the throne may have remained out of reach, Charles found other ways to leave his mark on the world. In the absence of royal duties, he focused his energy on causes that were close to his heart, most notably environmentalism, architecture and charitable work. These efforts became a significant part of his public identity, offering a glimpse of the man behind the title of Prince of Wales. Charles has long been an advocate for environmental conservation. Even decades before climate change became a mainstream issue, he was sounding the alarm about the dangers of deforestation pollution, and unsustainable agriculture. His commitment to the environment was often met with skepticism, particularly in the early years when environmental issues were not yet on the global agenda. Yet Charles was holding on to the issue, using his platform to promote sustainable practices and conservation efforts long before they became fashionable. Over time, his advocacy earned him praise for being ahead of his time though it also attracted criticism from those who believed a future king should focus more on traditional royal duties. In addition to his environmental work, Charles had an interest in architecture and urban planning. He was a vocal critic of modern architecture, famously expressing his disdain for certain contemporary designs that he felt were out of touch with the historical and cultural heritage of the United Kingdom. His views on architecture were controversial, 
particularly when he publicly criticized the designs of some high-profile buildings. Despite the backlash, Charles remained committed to his vision of preserving the aesthetic character of Britain's towns and cities. He even founded the Prince's Foundation, which promotes traditional building methods and sustainable urban development. Beyond these specific causes, Charles also devoted himself to a wide range of charitable work. Through the Prince's Trust, an organization he founded in 1976, Charles helped support disadvantaged youth, providing them with opportunities to develop skills and gain employment. Over the years, the Prince's Trust has assisted hundreds of thousands of young people, earning Charles a reputation as a philanthropist dedicated to making a real difference in the lives of others. Despite these efforts, however, public opinion about Charles remained divided. While his environmentalism and charitable work garnered respect in certain circles, many people still viewed him as somewhat out of touch with the modern world. Some saw his outspoken views on topics like architecture and organic farming as eccentric, if not elitist. For years, the question lingered. Was Charles really fit to be king? This question of readiness followed Charles throughout his time as heir apparent. The public accustomed to Queen Elizabeth's steady and traditional leadership wasn't always sure that Charles was cut from the same cloth. His personal struggles, including the rocky years of his marriage to Diana, further fueled doubts about his ability to take on the crown. Even his forward-thinking environmentalism, which is now widely embraced, was once seen as unconventional, raising concerns that Charles might not be the stable, consistent monarch the country needed. In recent months, however, it appears that now King Charles has begun to acknowledge the very suspicions that have surrounded him for years. As he steps into his role as king, there's a sense that Charles may be looking back at his long years of waiting and the public doubts that have accompanied them, Harry and William. Charles's role as a father to Prince William and Prince Harry has been marked by both moments of pride and deep struggles. Following Princess Diana's tragic death, Charles found himself not only grappling with his own grief, but also trying to raise his two sons in the public eye. The loss of Diana left an undeniable void in their family, and Charles was tasked with guiding William and Harry through their most formative years while facing public scrutiny. In many ways, Charles's relationship with his sons has been complex, particularly with the media constantly spotlighting them. For Prince William, who was always seen as the more dutiful and prepared for royal responsibilities, the bond with his father was, at times, strained, but remained relatively stable. Charles was able to offer William a path similar to his own, one ingrained in the traditions and expectations of the monarchy. However, the relationship with Harry has been far more turbulent. In recent years, especially after Harry departed from royal duties and moved to the United States, the family dynamic became visibly fractured. Harry's genuine criticisms of the royal family, including remarks about his father's parenting, and the institution's treatment of Meghan Markle caused a deep rift that has yet to be fully healed. Charles, once again, found himself under public pressure, this time regarding his ability to maintain familial unity. Despite the family struggles, the personal issues may have led to a shift in Charles's mindset. In recent months, there have been whispers that Charles has begun to recognize the weight of his responsibilities not just as king, but as a father and a public figure. The difficult experiences with his sons, though not overtly acknowledged, have undoubtedly played a part in shaping the man he is today. Someone who, at 75, seems to be re-evaluating both his personal and royal duties. But there is one more thing, or rather a person, we should take a closer look at. Camilla and his role as king. The relationship between King Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles has long been one of the most talked about aspects of his personal life. What began as a scandal during his marriage to Princess Diana 
eventually led to their own wedding ceremony in 2005, which was seen by many as a controversial step for the future king. For years, Camilla was portrayed negatively in the media, often referred to as the other woman who contributed to the breakdown of Charles's marriage to Diana. Public opinion was heavily against her, and many questioned whether the British people would ever accept her in a royal capacity. However, over time, the story of Camilla shifted. As the years passed, she began to take on a more active and visible role in royal duties, working alongside Charles in various charitable efforts and public appearances. The couple's commitment to their causes and their steady presence in public life slowly softened public attitudes toward the woman who would, apparently, be their future queen. While she may never have achieved the widespread popularity Diana had, Camilla's image has evolved from scandalous to accepted. When Charles ascended the throne in 2022, Camilla became Queen Consort, a title that still carries some controversy, but one that shows her position alongside Charles as he leads the monarchy. Charles's early months as king were not without their challenges. The transition from Queen Elizabeth's long, stable reign to Charles's rule came with its own set of hurdles. People questioned whether Charles, now in his 70s, was truly up to the task of being a modern monarch. There were lingering doubts about his past decisions and his personal life, as well as concerns about his ability to maintain the same level of respect and unity that his mother had fostered over decades. During this period, Charles faced significant pressure to prove himself. He had to go through not only the challenges of stepping into his new role, but also the intense public scrutiny that had followed him for much of his life. The early part of his reign saw him addressing these doubts head-on, focusing on key issues that were important to both him and the country. He continued to champion environmental causes as he had done for decades, and he worked to ensure that the monarchy adapted to the changing times while still upholding tradition. As king, Charles has gradually begun to silence some of the critics who doubted his ability to lead. His steady approach, combined with Camilla's growing acceptance, has helped stabilize his position as monarch. The initial shakiness of his reign seems to have given way to a more confident leadership style, one that reflects a man who has spent a lifetime preparing for this role. Though his reign began with uncertainties, Charles has already made several important changes that signal a new era for the monarchy. As his leadership continues to evolve, there are signs that he is ready to take on the responsibility, recent approach to his duties. So at 75, King Charles finally admits what we all suspected. While he spent decades championing environmental causes and voicing strong opinions on matters close to his heart, King has admitted that his leadership style has become more measured, cautious, and focused on preserving the stability of the monarchy rather than pursuing any dramatic reforms. This change in approach is clear evidence that Charles may have finally embraced the weight of his role in a way the public had long questioned whether he would. One of the clearest signs of this shift is his increased engagement in both domestic and international affairs. Since ascending the throne, Charles has shown a renewed commitment to his duties, taking on a more proactive role than many anticipated. He's been more visible at state functions, diplomatic meetings and charity events, signaling his desire to lead with a steady hand. His schedule has become more packed with official engagements, and he appears more determined than ever to represent the monarchy on the world stage. This uptick in involvement reflects a king who, despite his age, is eager to prove that he is capable of steering the monarchy in the right direction. Charles's shift also extends to the way he seems to be acknowledging past criticisms. For years, he was seen as distant, especially in the wake of his marriage to Princess Diana. Public opinion turned sharply against him after his affair with Camilla became public, and Diana's untimely death only strengthened the view that Charles had failed to live up 
to the expectations placed upon him, both as a husband and as a future king, and most importantly, as a father to little William and Harry. My wife was adored by millions, Charles once said in a moment of reflection about Diana, and he also admitted what we all suspected, she was also a devoted mother. Her legacy, even decades after her death, continues to cast a long shadow over the monarchy. And it's clear that Charles has had to come to terms with the public's enduring affection for her. As king, it seems he is finally ready to reckon with that legacy and acknowledge both the admiration Diana commanded and the criticisms that arose from their tumultuous relationship. The distance that existed between him and his sons, especially following Diana's death, has been another long-standing issue. The relationship with Prince Harry remains strained, with Harry openly criticizing both his father and the royal institution in recent years. Charles, however, appears to have taken a more restrained approach, choosing not to engage publicly in the ongoing family drama, likely as part of his broader effort to maintain royal neutrality. This is a marked change from his earlier years when Charles was more vocal on divisive issues. His shift toward a more traditional, restrained royal stance has earned him some respect as he now seems more focused on preserving the institution than promoting his personal views. So finally, what do you think about King Charles? Let us know in the comments.